Hello, I'm Sam. And I'm Tom. And welcome to Bournemouth. Beautiful. And this is the back of the net away day fans guide to visiting Dean Court. So Dean Court, or the Vitality Stadium as it is known, is situated in the eastern part of Bournemouth in the Kings Park area. It may not be big, but it's perfectly formed. And us Bournemouth fans look forward to welcoming you to our home on the south coast. But what else is there to do? Well, there's plenty. And whilst we'll give a nod to the different attractions and events you can take in outside of the football, in this video, we'll tell you how to get to Bournemouth, your journey to the stadium, where to eat and drink before the game, plus the hidden gems you won't want to miss. So firstly, train. If you're coming from London Waterloo, it's a direct line that takes an hour and 50 minutes. There's Wi-Fi with entertainment on board and you can get off at one of two stops. Firstly, Bournemouth, a beautiful Victorian station full of character with a stunning glass roof. Or Pokesdown, less glamorous but the gateway to Bournemouth's spiritual home, Boscombe. Please note this station doesn't have step-free access and is usually bypassed on the fast train, so you might want to check the timetable before you leave. But what can you do if you do get off at this stop? Well, once you approach the main road, left is where you need to go if you want to head straight to the ground, but then straight on is for you if you want to take in a few different pubs all away fan friendly. And to the right, we've got Boscombe, a 10 minute walk to the so-called dedicated away fans pubs. But firstly, Southbourne, Sobo, the home of independent businesses and a thriving high street. The first pub is The Grove, which isn't in the eclectic category, but it is popular because it boasts live sport, a beer garden with TV outside, and also has lots of seats scattered about indoors too. Before you get there though, the brew house and kitchen, a massive pub with craft beers, ales, bitters and more. Good for food, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's in excellent surroundings, worth a visit. And then the way out back, a hidden gem here on the corner. Once again, not a football pub, but here you can sample a beer or two from a range of different breweries, not least their own. It's quiet, it's sedate, but it can be busy on a match day and perfect if you want to sit outdoors and take in the cosmopolitan Southbourne vibes. So heading back to the station, just where you got off, the bell. There's a solid range of mainstream beers here. In its own words, it's a good local family and community pub with traditional values. It's popular with away fans, perfect for a sing song and the closest place to the station and the stadium if you want to sit, eat, drink and watch live sports, either inside or outside. Home and away fans go here. And as long as you're well behaved, there should be no issues. But if you fancy a hidden gem, a few doors down from the bell is a place where you can't not afford to visit. It's in off the far post. Say hi to Paul who's in charge, but this is a museum of football and contains so much memorabilia about AFC Bournemouth and beyond. You won't not find something about your club, guaranteed. So keep walking in that direction and you arrive into Boscombe. And this is traditionally where people who get off the supporters coaches are directed to. There's two bars in Boscombe, Maroy's and Mellow Mellow. Both good for away fans, a little less polished, but certainly decent enough for beers before the game begins. But if you are coming out of Pokesdown Station though, and just wanting to get straight to the ground, you need to head left and head down Clarence Park Road. Once you're on this road, walk right to the end and you'll soon be in Kings Park. Head past the car park and then you'll find the stadium right in front of you. It's about a 10 minute walk. Right, onto Bournemouth, it's the main station. It's over one kilometer from the town center on the insistence of town authorities back in the day in the 19th century. Therefore, it's not amazingly close to the town center, but it is still walkable. That said, there's an array of transport options here, including barrel bikes, yellow buses, more buses, and taxis too. If you're getting a taxi, choose PCR Streamline to get 10% off by showing your match ticket. On the main road, you can turn right and head into Bournemouth Town Centre. There are a number of pubs around the Lansdowne roundabout, or you can turn left, which will take you towards the stadium. And that's the direction we're going in on this video. So it's a short walk. You can catch a bus by the co-op as you've just seen. If you do, it's the number two and you get off at the Queen's Park Hotel. It's about six stops. It is easily walkable to the ground from here though, 20 minutes in total. Or you can use a barrel 
They're dead easy to use, a bike or a scooter. Just download the Beryl app to get an account set up. Unless you're down here for a while, the pay-as-you-go package is probably the right one for you. Otherwise, go for a minutes bundle. For an e-scooter, you will need to upload a picture of your driving license before you use it, but you can get approved in less than five minutes and there's a place to park right by the stadium. So, if you're on foot, there's a couple of pubs you can go to on the way, not least the Cricketers, which shows live football and has a reasonable range of mainstream beers. Alternatively, on Holdenhurst Road, a hidden gem, the Firkin Shed. It's a small, upbeat pub with a warm vibe, offering various ale, ciders, rums, plus occasional live music. It's family-run and curiously award-winning and has a small but perfectly formed beer garden too. And it gets very busy, popular with discerning away fans as well. Definitely worth a visit. Elsewhere, if you're coming from the Charminster direction, there's another favourite pub, which is the Brunswick. It's actually pretty bloody huge. Here's the outside courtyard. There's live sport on multiple screens. You can get food here. It's all reasonably priced, and it's just a 15-minute walk to the stadium. So there's an option for you there. But anyway, at the ground, where do you go? Well, head towards the corner of the south, that's the Ted McDougall stand, and the east stand, and you'll need to enter via turnstile F. Be wary that you'll be patted down and checked before you enter, so please leave plenty of time before you get in. Now, at the stadium, those who have accessibility issues can check out the following advice which the club have made available. So you may wish to pause on this part of the video in case you need further assistance. One thing you can do though, if you're in this category, is to go into the DC lounge in the East Stand. For home and visiting disabled supporters, they're welcome to meet before the game and enjoy refreshments there. They also show Sky Sports and BT Sport too. In the concourse, there are beer and snacks, but we'll come on to that. But if you fancy pre-match grub, look no further than the Cherries Cafe on Curzon Road. Five minutes from the ground, a traditional caf with a Cherries theme. It's the perfect place to start your match day, an ideal. It's all reasonably priced. And there are, of course, are card facilities if you'd like to pay via that method too. If you're driving and you fancy some grub before the game, after the welcome to Bournemouth sign on the A338, come off at the Cooper Dean roundabout and you can have a slap up meal at the Harvester. Alternatively, why not pop to the nearby Village Hotel and go to their bar and grill where they show plenty of live sport on the big screen and also they have plentiful options too in terms of food and drink as well. But if you're fed and watered and you just want to go straight to the ground, then go over the flyover and then come off at the next junction on the left, signposted Vitality Stadium. At the mini roundabout, go straight on and then bear around to the right to find the car park, which is priced at the very handsome fee of one pound. Absolute bargain. Once you're parked, just find the path at the far side of the car park and then follow your way around to the right near to the club's training pavilion where you can find your turnstile. It's easy peasy. In the concourse, you'll find a food, beer and snacks are plenty, all at a standard price. You should have no issues with this service. It should be really, really quick and payments, please take note, are cashless. If you do need cash, there is an ATM in the club superstore on the west side of the stadium. But there are no toilets outside the ground. The nearest ones are by the Kings Park Cafe, which is a three minute walk from the ground just by the cricket pitch. Of course, we hope you're making a weekend of it and there's plenty to do in the local area and beyond. In town, you have a lot to keep you entertained, including the Big Wheel, a walk along the pier, Rock Reef, the pier zip line, the Ocean Arian, the Smuggler's Cove Crazy Golf, live entertainment in the gardens, the BH2 Entertainment Complex and restaurants and cafes are plenty. Plus, further afield to the west, you've got the famous Sandbanks, Old Harry Rocks and the stunning Jurassic Coast. And to the east, of course, you can't not visit the New Forest National Park. We do, of course, advise that you stay over and you can find a hotel on sites like Hotels.com and Trivago. But if you've got any questions or comments, give us a message down below and we'll try to answer them for you. And if we can help plan your trip to Bournemouth, then we'll certainly do what we can to ensure you make the most of your experience down south. 
Thanks so much for watching and up the cherries. And if you're a fan of this video, you might be a fan of some of our others. So here's what you should do.